Okay, so beginning our day and uh, <clears throat> tomorrow will be the uh, uh, say anniversary of Ajahn Chah's birth. So uh, just a, a good opportunity to bring up a, a recollection, a reflection around uh, Ajahn Chah and his uh, life, and even though he's, say he's born in 1918, what would that be? It would be 104 years ago. Yeah, 104 years ago. Long time ago, he's been dead for a long time. But uh, somehow uh, his presence is still here, his spirit is still here, and his, his uh, teaching uh, and example is still influencing us. Um, so that, that uh, you know, having these occasions to, to recollect and, and to and bring attention to it was a certain because it's really I think it's really you know as a um, these teachings and this training don't come out of a vacuum um, and of course we have um, the Buddha twenty five hundred years ago and, um, but then in that say millennia of History, then it's been passed on by people uh, and people who live live the teachings, uh, exemplify the teachings, and Ajahn Chah was certainly one of those. And so there was a sense of gratitude and, and uh, uh, as well as an appreciation for the fact that that this is about the human condition. His teachings are all about the human condition and how to. Uh, live within this human condition in a, a, a wise and peaceful way. Um, so that, that uh, uh, Ajahn Chah was, a, a, say, a great exemplar. And I think of, uh, say, of a couple occasions or circumstances where he uh, um, you know, was making things very... Because it's making things very real uh, or practical, down to earth. Um, one time he was <coughs> visiting a Tibetan center in in uh, uh, in England, and uh, the night before he'd been uh, um, he had been asked to. Uh, uh, if he would give a te- teaching on vipassana, so you know, it's kind of like uh, you, know, you know, give us the teaching on you know, this insight teaching, insight tradition, and and, uh, and so Ajahn Chah said, okay, tomorrow I'll give you a teaching, and I want you all to bring uh, a fl- everyone bring a flower, and uh, so then. So everybody dutifully comes with their flower, and this is Tibetan tradition. So it's a, probably not so strange in, the, in making some weird offering to the guru or something. So okay, uh, but, uh, but then, um, but then, uh, Ajahn Chah, the next morning, Ajahn Chah says, "Okay, this uh, uh, the, the teaching on vipassana is to keep this flower with you all day and watch it wilt and decay. <laughs> There's your vipassana. <laughs> this is insight into the true nature of things. <laughs> so another... Okay, like in, in the, um, the very first book that we... Tra- book of Translations of, of Ajahn Chah that we did uh, there was a, a short talk that was given to an English woman, uh, Marjorie, I can't remember her last name. But, uh, um, and she was taking her leave from Ajahn Chah. So, living with the cobra is the, is the talk. And, uh, uh, 
and, and it's a, it, it's a it's a wonderful teaching. And Jen Chao is very kind of kind and direct and succinct. Um, and it was translated well, but there's a part in it at the very end, at the very end that was never translated. It was left out. Um, and Ajahn Munindo translated it. I think he just found it difficult to. I mean, it's because Ajahn Chah sometimes plays with language, and and so it's sometimes hard to translate or to capture what 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 in in English what he's what he's saying. And but it was. Um, uh, so at the, after giving this teaching and she's taking leave and she's going to be uh, you know, going heading back to England and it's an encouragement for practice and um, in Thai what he said he was like yeah, die gone, I die gone, die <laughs> so it's like um, you know, so it's sort of like you know, don't sort of like, you know don't, don't die too soon uh, you have to die before you die. <laughs> so it's the, the, the sense of, of paying attention to, um, yeah, what, say death is a, a very, you know, very uh, imminent uh, aspect of, of our human existence. Uh, so, but, you know, just look, look after your life, don't, don't uh, don't uh, don't you know, die prematurely, but like using the practice to be able to you know this die before you die. Uh, so this sense of and I think it was was it you who brought it up or was it Lumpur Sinedo? Lumpur Sinedo brought it up. But right. I was talking about it at tea time yesterday. Oh really? Oh okay. <laughs> okay, that was then it's in the ether. <laughs> That is the uh, uh, yes, that sense of, of really needing to the sense of, of you know, dying before you die. It's more around uh, this aspect of relinquishing and the sense of identification um, with me and my personality and my identity and my life. Me and my life uh, can be such a, uh, a complicated and fraught uh, perception of that being able to. To relinquish that, that, and not being entangled, uh, then there's a sense of freedom, and so that 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 one is using this this life uh, for its yeah, its highest benefit. Uh, so I think that's a uh, um, just recollecting Ajahn Chah and recollecting his life and recollecting our own life, so that we use our life for yeah for its. Benefit.